Hello again. You're back for more. Um, this time we're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle, which is a uh, uh, principle that deals with equilibrium and equilibrium constants. And it's one of those principles that's super simple to state and say what it is. Then when you start to try and interpret it and apply it to situations, it gets a little bit more um, squirrely, I guess. So uh, when we do this, I'm going to state it be very straightforward you'll think well yes obviously and then when we start applying it we'll, we'll make sure that we do some examples and try some stuff out the next video will be the actual like math of how do we put numbers on this idea but this one I'm going to talk in kind of generalities okay so Le Chatelier's principle is that a reaction will try to reach equilibrium right a reaction that's not at equilibrium will try to reach equilibrium and if you have a reaction at equilibrium and you change it in some way change the concentrations in there, it will go back to equilibrium. Again, that's pretty obvious, right? Reactions want to be at equilibrium, or not want to be, but reactions tend to move until they get to equilibrium because we need those reaction rates, right? Forward reaction, reactant to product needs to be equal to reverse reaction from product to reactant. That's what equilibrium is. Once it gets there, it stays there, right? Nothing else happens. And so if nothing else happens for those, um, uh, once you reach equilibrium, right, that's where a reaction is going to go and that's where it's going to stop. And so it's always trying to get there. Um, what Le Chatelier's principle means in practice is that if we want to push a reaction to increase the concentration of those products, right, which is usually what we want to do with, with chemical reactions. We want our yields to be good. We want to create as much product as we can. Otherwise, why are we setting up this reaction? Right. And so if we want to push this reaction toward products, there's a couple of things that we can do. Right. If we know KEQ, we know the ratio of products over reactants at equilibrium. Right? And now with Le Chatelier, we know that if we knock that balance out of alignment, it will reestablish that. And how is it going to do that? Right. If those numbers don't line up, right, if we have more a higher concentration of reactants than would match the equilibrium constant, right? So if we increase the amount of reactants in there, how is it going to get back to uh, equilibrium? It has, if our denominator is too large, we have to make our numerator larger and our denominator smaller. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna convert the reactants, which are the denominator, into products, which are the numerator, until we get back to that equilibrium. And so from a chemist standpoint, what that means is that the reactants will become products, will create more products that way. So one of the ways that we can use Le Chatelier's principle is if we have a reaction that reaches equilibrium and the concentration of products is not high enough, we can add more reactants, right? The more reactants we add, equilibrium will keep trying to reestablish itself, right? So the higher the concentration of the reactants are, the faster that reactant to products rate ends up being. And so we create more products until it reaches equilibrium again, right? And then the reaction stops and we need to either accept it and say, well, that's how much product we got out, or we can add more reactants. Right. So again, not terribly difficult to grasp. If you want more products, add more reactants. Right? Makes sense. Um, so that, you know, that example of Le Chatelier's principle is not particularly difficult to grasp. The other thing that we can do is if we have a reaction where the reactants are reaching the, um, are reacting to form products, and we've reached equilibrium on, uh, on that, right, and we don't have a high enough concentration of products, if we can remove the products from the solution, right, then what happens, right? We re de if we decrease the the concentration of products, what happens to our ratio of products to reactants? Right? Our numerator is getting smaller. And so that number, right, that ratio is now off. And in order to reestablish the ratio that is KEQ, we need again to create more products or you have fewer reactants around. And so the way that we do that, of course, is reactants become products. We lose reactants, we gain products. That reestablishes that KEQ. So there's two ways that we can push a reaction to give us more product, right? And both of them involve Le Chatelier's principle. One 
is we can add more reactants. Right? The more reactants we add, the more we push the reaction toward um, the product side of the, of the chemical equation. Two, we can remove products. Right? So sometimes in reactions you'll have like you'll have your reaction going and then you'll be boiling that reaction at the same time. Your product has a low boiling point, so that product will kind of boil out of solution and then you'll trap it and catch it somewhere else in the reaction. But as that uh, product is removed from the solution, the equilibrium that is in that solution is no longer established. And so the only way it can reestablish itself is reactant, create more product. Right? And so that's the, there's two ways we can do this. Add more reactants, remove the products. Right? Either way results in the same thing. It results in a, in a ratio of products to reactants that does not match KEQ. And so KE or the, the concentrations will then reestablish themselves as the correct ratio that matches KEQ. All right? So the next video that we're going to do, we're going to put a number on this. And so we're going to say, if we know what the ratio of products to reactants is at any point, and we know what KEQ is, we can predict what's going to happen. So that's the next video. We're going to talk about the reaction quotient, which is basically the ratio at whatever time in the reaction. That's not necessarily the equilibrium, the point of equilibrium. So we're going to do that in order to kind of put numbers on Le Chatelier's principle. So and that one, we'll get to actually get some numbers, do some calculations, all that good stuff. But this one was just kind of the general outline of Le Chatelier's principle and how do we use it in chemical reactions itself. All right, see you in the next one.